Welcome to Freedom Fellowship. We are glad to have you with us this morning, and we pray that the word that will go forth today will be beneficial to your soul and that God will bless you and your home. Good morning, Freedom family and friends. We are here in the sanctuary this first Sunday in the month of May. As we're still quarantined, we still want to bring you God's word to encourage you and your friends and family. And so we ask God's presence to be in the midst of this place and in the midst of our homes right now. Let us pray. God, we thank you this morning for giving us the ability to enter into your courts with praise, to have thanksgiving in our hearts and to know that you are God and that you are still in control. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you continue to bless the word that goes out week after week, even the midweek word, Lord. Help us to continue to depend on you and your every word. We continue to pray for those that have been impacted by this virus. We pray for the medical personnel and the essential workers that are out doing their jobs for the sake of others. We just pray that you would bless them for that sacrifice. And right now, God, we pray that you would bless this word. Let it be beneficial to our hearts. May we get something from it that we can apply for this week. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I mentioned, we are here in the sanctuary, and today we're going to start this first Sunday of May with a new series called Being. God is concerned about our total being. This is why he gave us his word, his son and his spirit, so that in him we live and move and have our being. Acts chapter 17, verse 28. So what does this being look like? It is an existence that is grounded, an existence that is guaranteed, geared, and graced in Christ. This series will cover the various states of being that we as believers should be aiming for in God through Christ Jesus. It is our prayer that your physical existence will be covered by the spiritual equipment God provides in his word. Through his favor and faithfulness, he will allow us to be what we desire to be in him. How many of you desire to be what God wants you to be in him? And if you have that desire this morning, I want to take you to part one of our series, Be Steadfast. Be Steadfast. It's going to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Just one verse for today. In this familiar passage, we will be inspired and empowered to be steadfast in the will and work of the Lord. And so the key verse, this is the only verse, is verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. I think I'll read that again to encourage all of us this morning. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. And so I want to go right into our first point, because we're talking about being focused and fixed if you're going to be steadfast, you've got to be focused and fixed. And how do you do that? Well, here it is. Persistence requires patience and power. If you're going to be steadfast, you have to understand that focus that you need is that persistence that requires patience and power. And we're going to come out of the first part of verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Steadfast. That, that is our our title for today, our theme for today in this message, that we want to be steadfast. Well, what is steadfast? Well, being steadfast is, is resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. So if you desire to be steadfast, it means that you are resolutely or dutifully firm and unwavering. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, it is described as being diligent. Diligent. So, you know, that persistence that you have to have to do what the God wants you to do in his will, it requires you to be diligent, to be steadfast. In Colossians 1.11, Paul also goes forward in defining it as being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and 
patience. You see, your patience will pay off if you learn how to be steadfast in the Lord. So the persistence also, not only just patience, but, but, but that persistence and that power that comes from God, it, it's required to be steadfast in something we work on each day. Because we know that in due season, God will perfect what he has placed in us. Why do you need to be steadfast? Because you got to hold on to your change come. You have to be hold on. You have to hold on until God is able to come in and show you greater things that he will do in and through you. But going deeper, why should we strive to be steadfast? Well, being steadfast will allow us to stay put, to stay put. For, first of all, it will allow us to be purposeful. You see, you have to be purposeful to understand that all of us have a purpose. It always works out because God has a purpose and God has a plan. And so being steadfast allows us to stay put purposeful because we have a purpose that when God is working things out, God is trying to help us understand what is it that he wants to achieve in us. But not only being purposeful, but also being unshakable. Sh unshakable, which means that we understand that we are standing on a solid foundation, a firm foundation in Jesus Christ. And so I'm steadfast because I'm not going to let anybody take me off of my game in Jesus. The last thing about staying put to be steadfast is that we're trusting we're trusting in God. We love that him. We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word because he's never failed us. So if you have known the faithfulness of God, why not keep that steadfastness in God by trusting him? Well, not only do we have to be persistent with patience and power, but we got to understand next with that focus and fixed steadfastness that a permanent faith will keep us in a grounded state. A permanent faith will keep us in a grounded state. In other words, we have to understand that if we are going to be steadfast, we have to be grounded. And if we're going to be grounded, we got to have something that we anchor on to. And we anchor our faith in Jesus Christ. you got to be very sure that your anchor grips and holds, holds and grips the solid rock named Jesus. You see, the thing is, when you have Jesus as your anchor, your faith is permanent, which means that it's not here one day and gone the next day. No, your faith is here because you realize that God is who he said he is. He is faithful. And if God is faithful, then I ought to have a faith that's consistent and permanent so that I can be grounded in whatever state I find myself in. But, but don't take my word for it. Look at the second part of verse 58. It says, be immovable. Be immovable. You, you know that Psalm 1, you know, you're, you're, you're planted by that water and you can't be shaken. Hello, somebody. To be immovable means not able to be moved. We sing that song, I shall not, I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Anybody who has their life planted by the water of life will be able to stand in every situation. Because those who are grounded in Christ are permanent in their faith. I'll repeat that again. Those who are grounded in Christ are permanent in their faith. So being grounded in Christ will make our faith permanent so we can do three things. First of all, stay put instead of sway to. We got to understand that we got to stay put when it comes to our faith. We don't, now is not the time, especially now, it's not the time for us to give up hope. Now is not the time for us to have doubt. Now is not the time for us to give up on God because he has not given up on us. We got to stay put with God through this thing. We cannot sway to the left or right depending on the news that we hear on the radio or the TV or the internet. No, we have to stay put with God because if you stay with God, he will stay with you. The second thing that we can do to have a permanent faith is to stick to instead of slip up. All of us have fallen short, but the thing is, the way that we get up, the way that we make it is that we stick to what works. God works. The blood works. So we stick to God because we know that if we stick with God, everything will be all right. I know that the more you stick with God, the less you slip up. But I'm going to talk about that later on. The third thing to have a permanent faith is
things to succeed in instead of struggle over. There are people in this world today that are struggling because they don't have a faith, let alone a faith in God. But I'm going to tell you right now that if you have a faith in God, you will be able to succeed in and through your faith instead of struggling over your doubt and your fears. Well, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 refers to it as the peace of God. You know, and somewhere else it says that, you know, you ought to have a peace, the peace that comes from God that surpasses all understanding. It's nothing like having peace in God. You see, the way we can have faith is having peace with God. Because we believe that no matter what we see, our faith says that we know that all things are going to work out. We know that God is going to work them out because it is the state of being that God has provided to us to stay in peace, stick in peace, and succeed in peace. And so having the peace of God will cause us to be immovable. Don't take my word for it. Paul showed this in Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 12, when he said, Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. You and I ought to have a testimony that many of us are okay because we have something that is a cushion for us. But there are some that are struggling right now. But you know what? When you have God, you can be like Paul. When I don't have much, I'm all right. When I do have a lot, I'm all right. Because I learn how to be content. I learn how to have a resilience seen in God that I depend on God for everything in my life. And if I just wait, God will open the door. God will make a way out of no way because I got peace with him. You see, even in the most difficult times we face, we remember the one who keeps us grounded in our being. Don't get beside yourself. Don't lose your mind. Be able to say that I know that God will make a way and he's going to make a way somehow because he made a way for me before and he can do it again. But let me go on and, and, and give you one more little tidbit about this immovable. Understand this, that the peace of God is, is what keeps us content in God. You see, I love it because my contentment in God, my being content with God is because I have peace with him. Doesn't mean that I, I, I'm good every day. Doesn't mean I do right every day. But even when I do wrong, I can go to God in prayer. I can go to God and say, God, forgive me. God, help me. God, strengthen me. God, help me in my weakness because I know in my weakness, that's when you come in strong. You see, the peace of God is what keeps us content. And this remembrance is rooted in having a permanent faith that says, I will trust God through the whatever, whenever, and whoever of life. I'll say that again. Having a permanent faith that's immovable says that I will trust God through the whatever, whenever, and whoever of life. Whatever comes at me, I will be immovable because of the peace of God. You know what? Throw it at me and, and let me show you what, who's, who's my fence. Let me show you who's my shield. Let me show you who's my strong tower. See, no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I serve a God who I walk with each and every day. Do you know this God that I'm talking about? Do you have this peace that I'm talking about? Because whatever is thrown at you, you will be able to overcome it because you serve an almighty God. Secondly, whenever it comes to me, whenever it comes to me, I will be immovable because of the peace of God. Look, seasons will come and seasons will go, but I'm so glad that trouble don't last all way. I'm so glad that when I wake up in the morning, I know that everything's going to be all right because I know that God is shining in my soul. So you got to be sure in your faith that whenever things happen, yeah, you may be in a good season right now, but there's a storm coming. And that storm is ain't, ain't, not going to last forever. It's going to come because there's going to be some things that God's going to reveal for you to grow in, to know in. And so whenever it happens, just be ready because you got God's peace. And then my favorite one, the last one, whoever comes for me. Now, you know, we could get straight gangster up in here, but we're not going to do that because we're in God's house. But, you know, people try to come for you. They, 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 they tell you what they're going to do 
to you, but let me tell you, can't nobody touch God's anointed. Can't nobody touch those that are under the wing of God, that are under the shadow of the Almighty. You got to understand that whoever comes for you, they ain't bigger than the God that you serve. I'll, I'll not be proper. They're not bigger than the God that you serve. So whoever comes for you, they can't not disturb your peace. Then there's a song that says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give to you. When the enemy come or the adversary come say, you didn't give it to me, and guess what? You ain't going to take it away because I got the peace of God that tells you to be still. So remember the one who keeps you. When you do that, you will be able to be steadfast and immovable, but also even more. We do more because we are serving and striving. So when you seek God, you will do more than scratching and surviving. You will find yourself serving and striving because, I mean, serving and striving because you have tasted the goodness of the Lord. And so I want to go to the application for today. The application. Serving and striving. Serving and striving. God will supply when we occupy. God will supply when we occupy. It says always abounding in the work of the Lord. We should always be abounding in the work of the Lord. And so what does abounding mean? Let's just talk about that real quick. Abounding means to be amply supplied, to be amply supplied. We know that God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. So if he's asking us to always be up to something, it means that he's giving us the ability to be supplied when we occupy our time with the things that he wants us to do. Because being occupied in God will keep us supplied by him. Get this, being occupied in God. You can be occupied in a lot of things in this life, but why not get occupied in what God, what God is up to? I guarantee you, you get occupied in the things of God, it will keep you supplied. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things that you require in your life will be supplied or added to you. You see, there is enough work to do that we should always be occupied in the work of God. And so to accomplish this, God has supplied us with the tools needed to serve him. And they are his word, his spirit, and his power. Galatians 2.20 provides us with the why to how we and why we do this work. For those of us who are bold enough to declare, we make it personal by saying, I have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. When you enlist in the work of the Lord, you will understand that your life is because of Christ. Having this understanding says, my work, my worship, my worth is in Christ. You see, if you want to always abound in the work of the Lord, you got to understand that even though you're doing the work, you can say my work, but it's God's work. Hello, somebody. You can say my worship, yes, my worship to God. You can say my work, yes, it's because God sought enough of me to send his son to die for me and to raise for me and to ascend for me that I understand that, that look, it is worth giving my life over to God because he's done so much for me and he continues to bless me over. Do you have that testimony this morning? Has God been good to you? Has God been so abundant in your life of blessing you abundantly over and over? Are you willing to say, I'm going to abound in him as long as I can, as much as I can? Because as it pertains to life, to being abound in the work of the Lord, it will keep us out of the workings of this world. Second Peter 3.14 describes us as being spotless. And I'm going to tell you how that works because when you are abounding, get this y'all, we sin less when we are selfless. The thing is, sin normally comes when there's something that is on, that is on the self that, that tries to get in the way of the spirit. And so I want to tell you that we have to contend with faith, but if we want to abound in the work of the Lord, we, are, we have to be selfless. We have to sacrifice, be self-sacrificial so that we sin less. Because I guarantee the more you sacrifice for God, the less you sacrifice in your righteousness for wretchedness. Well, let me tell you how the work of the Lord keeps us out. First of all, it keeps us out of trouble. 
The work of the Lord keeps us out of trouble. If you want to get off the streets, well, you can't go to the streets now because we're in quarantine. But if you want to get out of the, the places that you should not be, that you know you shouldn't be, that your mom and daddy told you not to be at, that you know if you got busted and caught, hello, somebody, you'd be calling on somebody to bail you out. You got to understand that now is the time to get busy in the work of the Lord. Because I guarantee if you're busy in God's house, you won't have to be here seven days a week, but get here at least one day a week. Find something to do in the community. Find something to do in your neighborhood. Find something to do in your church home to get you activated in the work of God. Because I guarantee you'll find yourself less in trouble when you're doing the work of the Lord. And why is that? Because if you're doing the work of the Lord, you are under the Trinity. You are under the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is watching over you. Jesus is looking out for you. And the Spirit is inside of you. You see, you can't go wrong when you're under the Trinity. When you're under the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why I want all three. I don't need just one. I need three and one, but I want all three because I need God to watch over me day and night. I need Jesus to look out for me when I pray, and I need the Spirit to help me and lead me and guide me everywhere I go. Thirdly, the work of the Lord keeps us through our trials. It's nothing better than to go through something while you're serving God. Because I guarantee there's two things that happen. First of all, you understand that you're going to get through when you continue to focus on what God is doing. But second, you will see as you're serving God that your life is better than what you think it is. That you thought you had trials and tribulations, but while you're serving the Lord and you minister to people, you'll say, thank you, God, that my situation is not as bad as theirs because it could have been worse. It could have been me outdoors. It could have been me on the street. It could have been me homeless. It could have been me hungry. It could have been me without any place to, to have a habitat. I thank you, God, that even through my trials you're worth serving. I can pray. I can serve. I can sing. I can serve. I can do some mission work. I can serve. I can evangelize. I can preach and teach because I understand that you're going to bless me through my trials as I serve you. But God brought us out of sin to bring us into his service. That's what we're trying to get to. That the work of the Lord helps us to understand that God brought us out of sin to bring us in to his service. And that work is to aid in the redemption, reconciliation, and restoration of the broken, bound, and burdened. There's work to do, y'all. After, even after this pandemic ends, there are going to be people that are trying to be redeemed. They, 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 they're trying to understand if they survive this thing, why me, Lord? And if they don't know the Lord, hopefully they'll get to know God. There's some people that are going to need to be reconciled to understand that life is precious. And we don't know who's going to be here. There's some people that couldn't even say goodbye to loved ones that have passed on. And so you ought to get to reconcile with everybody in your house, everybody in your circle, people that you don't even know. Just reconcile with them because you don't know the hour nor the day when you will not see them anymore. And then restoration. God knows that we're going to need restoration after this thing. People keep talking about the new normal, but guess what? I serve a God who can restore all the things that are broken. That he can restore that which has been lost. And, and, and don't and we, we can't say the loss of life is going to be restored because we know that that time is going to come at another time when the judgment comes. But I'm talking about restoring like a Job experience. The things that you have lost, you have lost. But watch God turn around and bless you again. Because there are people out there that are broken, that are bound, and that are burdened. And they need to have somebody that know God come and introduce them to God. And so we must occupy the time we have to do what God has applied for us to do. So instead of just abiding in God, we ought to be abounding him. Instead of just binging, because y'all know we all been watching some good old television, Netflix, Hulu, whatever you got, Zulu, you, you got something. We all been binging on it. We got to keep believing, because we can't, we can't just get distracted. We got to keep Focus and be determined. Instead of complaining, keep confessing. Yeah, you can complain about not being able to go to where you want to go, not being able to get a haircut, get your hair done, get your nails done, get your feet done. But guess what? You start got to start confessing that, look, God, you know what? I thank you for still watching over my house. I thank you for still putting food on my table. God, forgive me when I got beside myself because I wanted to do what I want without regarding other people who, who are dying out there because they're being exposed to this thing. So instead of complaining, we ought to be confessing that, God, we have sinned and we need you to heal this land. So keep on because you know that God has a well done when you believe that he will do. 
That's the last application for today. If you're going to be serving and striving, know this. God has a well done for those who believe he will do. I'll say that again. God has a well done for those who believe he will do. The last part of verse 58 says, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. You see, in the end, we all want to come out with what 2 Peter 3.14 refers to as blameless. Because here is the reason why. Whatever we are willing to go through for God will set us up to get through with God. Can I, I'm going to say that again. Whatever we are willing to go through for God will set us up to get through with God. It is amazing when you think about it that, that when you're willing to go through with God, it's going to set you up to get through with God. See, this means, this means, this means, this means that when we are willing to go through with God, it means that we remain steadfast, immovable. About it because we know in the end it will be worth it. That storm, I'm willing to go through with God because I know I'm going to be blessed on the other side. On the other side of through, as they say. Everything we do for God is worth it because God is worthy. If we believe God is able, that he can do it, then we ought to get to whatever it is he is calling us to do. Believing that God will do will allow us to do the things that will get us a well done when we get to heaven. If you want to get a well done, you've got to believe that God will do. That God is able to do just what he said he will do. There's songs that he, he, he's going to fulfill everything that he promised to you. And so don't give up on God because he's not, he has not given up on you. Get this. Our toil, our labor, and work are all for a worthy call. So let us work while it is day. Jesus even said in John 9 and 4, he says, We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no man can work. Ephesians 2.10 even says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. There's a work for each of us to do, but we got to do it while we can. Jesus made it, made it clear that you got to work while it is day because the night comes when no man, no woman, no, no person can work. And so what are we working? Well, here are the works of God that he has called us to work. You see, the work of salvation is the first one. There's folks out there that need to be saved. Until every single soul in this world is saved, there is a work to do. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That still means something even today. The work of reconciliation, I mentioned it earlier, I'll mention it again. There are people that God has put in your path that need to be reconciled to God and to other people. And God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. The third work is the work of redemption. Yet yeah, we, we don't have the power to redeem folk, but we have the ability to take folks to our Redeemer. See, the thing is, if you know that God redeemed your soul, you ought to want other folks' soul to get redeemed. The, the fourth one is the work of evangelism. How are we going to get that redemption out here? Well, we have to be able to tell them who is able to redeem, who is able to save to the utmost. And I'm so glad that that evangelism, that evangelistic effort that we can do is not limited by us being quarantined. You can call somebody up. You can send them an email. You can Zoom. Hello, somebody. You can Google Meet. You can do whatever you can do to reach out to them. You can FaceTime them to give them a word of encouragement that Jesus saves. And this is the perfect time to get to know Jesus because we're not doing anything else. The next work is the work of service. Yes, we have to serve God with all that we can. And know that this work is according to God's gifting and gracing in us through the work of the Holy Spirit. He has given us gifts so that we can serve him with our total being. It is not us, but rather God working in us because Philippians 2.13 says, It is God who is at work in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So even if we have to go to work, we must work the works. Even if we are right now out of work, we must work the works. Even when, if we are retired from work, we still must work the works. Even when we may be even looking for work, we must work the works. Because the works still need to be done. 
a time is coming when the work of salvation will end and the work of the rapture will begin. I'm going to tell you now, there's going to come a time where all these works, the work of salvation, reconciliation, redemption, evangelism, and service will end and the work of the rapture will begin. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 and 14 says, Now if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on it remains, he will receive a reward. And so in closing today, I want to tell you that you ought to want a amen for a well done. You see, when this life is over, I want to be able to hear God say, well done. Not because I thought I did a great job, but because I want to know that it was worth it. I want to hear him say, look, it's done. You did what you had to do and you did it, and now it's time for you to come into this eternal rest. The same thing is, we ought to say amen because we know it is so that there's going to be a time in the day that God is going to tell us, well done if we remain steadfast. It is times like even these that we're in right now where we are grateful that we have prayed up studied up and called up so we can be steadfast and stand under the grace of God. Aren't you glad that you learned how to pray before this pandemic? Aren't you glad you got a cup of scripture in your soul and your mind before this pandemic? Aren't you glad that you learned how to call on God before this pandemic? And if you didn't, let me tell you, now it's not too late for you to call on God right now. It's not too late for you to open up his word right now. It's not too late for you to call on him, Father in heaven, and just have a holy conversation with the holy God. You see, if you do, it'll keep you steadfast grounded, standing under the grace of God. And so we have to believe that each day we are steadfast on earth is preparing us for our settlement in heaven. The reason we have to be steadfast down here is because we got a home in glory. We got a settlement in heaven that if we just hold on, we'll get there one day. So how can one use their steadfastness to be prepared and ready for the rapture? Well, there's a song by Douglas Miller that talks about all of the things we will be steadfast in doing for that day. It says, I learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. And I've learned how to suffer. For if I suffer, I will gain eternal life. I've learned how to be patient. I've learned how to wait it out. And I've learned how to suffer, for if I suffer, I will gain eternal life. Before I get to the chorus, I'm going to tell you this. Learning how to live holy with patience will allow us to be steadfast even when we have to suffer every now and then. But it is only temporary because there will come a day where our weeping will be over. Our suffering, our headache, our pain will pass away. So as we wait that day, we declare and hope the chorus of the song. We'll say, when I see Jesus, amen. When I see Jesus, amen. All of my trials, they will be over. You ought to shout right now. All of my trials will be over when I see Jesus, amen. Come on, you gotta, you gotta, come on, you gotta say this with me. When I see Jesus, what you gonna say? Amen. When I see the man from Galilee, the man that set me free, the man that died for me, the man that got up on the third day, the man that ascended into heaven, the man that is interceding for me right now, the man that looked out for me when I couldn't look out for myself, I'm going to shout amen because all of my troubles, all of my heartache, all of my disappointments, they will be over. When I see Jesus, I'm going to say amen. And so in closing, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, and you will be blessed to hear the words of our Master and Savior say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your Master. Truly, it is a blessing to know the Lord. But a greater blessing when we serve the Lord in the land of the living. So be encouraged, freedom. Be encouraged. Even if you are at home, you may even be at work, wherever you are right now. The work that we have to do, we, we have to work those works this week, every day, every, every month, every year, so that God can be glorified in and through us. 
So I pray that God has blessed you with this word today. Let us close out in prayer. God, we thank you once again for allowing us to come into your house. And God, we thank you for allowing your word to come into the homes of those, the spaces of those that are listening to this message right now. We pray that, Lord, if a person is not in Christ, that they will become a child of God, become a disciple of Christ, a follower of Christ, even right now. Help them, Lord, to just make that first step to say, I believe that God can save my soul. I believe that Jesus died for me so that they can start a life anew. And for those of us who are saved, God, help us to remain steadfast in our faith so that we can stand firm to help those that, that are sinking right now. God, we know people are sinking right now because there are people that are without hope. But yet, God, you give us hope each and every day. So help us to shine the light of hope that is within us through you so that somebody can learn how to be steadfast in God. We pray that you continue to bless and keep us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We thank you for tuning in, and we pray that you will tune in every week uh, as we offer messages of hope and Bible studies that will develop your spiritual growth. Be blessed and stay tuned.